Tokyo. So it's the second episode of the second season of Foundation. As always, I'm Al, this is the Geek in Review. And I'm going to be doing a bit of non-spoilery stuff before I get into the episode, so I'll give you a warning before I get to that. But first of all, just to say thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, just click it, and if you make it all the way to the end, click like as well. Picking up again where it left off last week or at the end of the last episode, this one is really setting up what's going to come in the next season, or at least the next few seasons if the show gets renewed, and I mean, it's setting up a lot. Gal's visions are playing a big part in this and in Psycho history and how it affects it. They need to focus on the second foundation and we see how Harry's emergence from the vault has affected those over the last hundred years or so. But there's something or someone or at least a couple of names in this episode I didn't expect to see get brought up so soon. I expected to hear one or see one in season two but the other I was kind of shocked that they're bringing us there that quickly. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Also see how the first foundation has interpreted the work of Harry. And how maybe not everyone is fully on board with the way that the Foundation is getting run at the moment. And I think that's going to be a huge plot thread in this season. We're going to see a lot more of how this organisation has evolved and where it's going. And that of course all depends on who leads it. But anyway, let's get into the episode. So as I said, it picks up exactly where it left off last week. We Harry, we Gal and Salvor having escaped after a century locked inside his own work. He's understandably a bit pissed off and that's not just because he's on Cinex. He was conscious the entire time, so he was awake 24-7 or at least however long a day lasts wherever he is. Gal tells him that the plan is off course and he says it's because the second foundation hasn't started yet. Remember, that was all supposed to be set up and it was revealed at the end of season 1, but it's been a hundred years since and they're lagging behind and that's why things are off course. Salvor of course knows who Harry is because she met the other version at the vault on Terminus, but he doesn't know her because I said it's another version. So things are over a hundred years behind with the second foundation and no one is really where they're supposed to be with the second crisis looming. They still need to repair the ship before they can leave the planet and Salvor heads outside to unblock the engine. They manage to escape Synax and Salvor wants to get things back on track but they're decades away from being anywhere near Terminus and without having a jump capable ship it's going to take them quite a while to get there. We find out in this episode that the second foundation was supposed to adjust the course of the Empire as they'd have access to all of Harry's plan whereas the first foundation would be kept in the dark. Harry finds out about Salvor's visions as well and decides to use her to glimpse some of the past and try and correct things. Harry also wants Gal to use her powers to help deal with the second crisis by looking into the future. So they create a near death experience to help Gal challenge her powers. She sees a planet under attack and she's being chased by someone who knows who she is, he's calling her by name and also mentioning the second foundation. And this guy seems pretty powerful. And they just get it out the way and say it, that it's the mule. Now if you haven't read the books that won't mean anything to you and I'm not going to get into it too much because it might ruin some things. I knew this guy was coming because he's a huge arc in the Foundation series but I didn't think we're going to get him this soon. The guy is like a huge threat and he's going to have the same abilities as Gal and more. Because his arc doesn't really come along till later in the book so it seems that they are going to move up the pace a little bit. And using Gal's ability to see him in the future is a good setup, and it also reassures the book readers that he's on his way because I tell you if you've read the book you're waiting for this guy. When she wakes up from the vision she even has handprints around her neck because as I said this guy is insanely powerful. Harry never planned for anyone like this existing so he's completely outside anything that they can expect. Now we get a new planet in this episode on the outer rim as well and a new character brother Constance and is a follower of the foundation spreading the words of the prophet. That of course is Harry Seldon. And it seems that in the last hundred years it's become a sort of semi-religious movement. It's a kind of great way to spread the word but also it really reminds me of that story arc in June. 
Let's say some people have interpreted the events at the end of season one as some sort of foreshadowing that's going to save humanity, which it sort of is. This planet has been abandoned by the Empire and the Foundation want to help it with their knowledge, and the fact the Foundation can operate like this without the Empire noticing means that their reach isn't near as big as they'd like to think it is or they'd like others to think it is. Anyway, using some of their tech to fool the locals, they convince them and use it to tell the story of how the Empire abandoned them and basically what's going to happen next. So it seems that the vault opened on Terminus over a century ago has inspired people all across the galaxy and these two are trying to spread the word in their own style. And speaking of the vault, they receive a message to say that it's opened again and this second crisis is on its way. And people have been waiting decades for this and Harry's return. It seems that he's more like a Jesus Christ character than an advanced computer program at this point in the story, at least for certain people. One thing that I did notice is when they jump back to Terminus they seem to have advanced technology as they don't need to be asleep to jump. So it seems that the foundation is thriving. Now the other guy that I've not mentioned yet is the child from season 1 who met Harry the first time he emerged from the vault. Polly Versoff and he's the only surviving person to witness the events at the end of season 1. So once they get back to Terminus, we find out that some division in the Foundation and how they've been doing things for the last hundred years. Polly's a little bit upset that he doesn't have a bigger seat at the table, as he is the last surviving member of the original Foundation, and that he thinks they might not be on the road that's intended, they might be making the same mistakes that the Empire's made. The Warden of Terminus enters the vault and is lifted up by some sort of energy field before shouting for Hoborn Mallow. Now again, a huge name from the book and I'm not going to get into this at all because obviously it's going to come up in the next few episodes and it's going to be a side quest for people to track this guy down. But yeah, along with him and the mule, they've really introduced a lot of big things in this episode. And I do like that they carried the character of Polly over, that's not something that I would have expected. I did think would anyone be alive from the first season and I didn't think that they would do it, but you know, they have and well done, it worked for me. Now back on Trantor, Day is contemplating his legacy and still looking at the assassination attempt from last week and he still has marriage on his mind to Queen Seraph and of course keeping his throne. And they're still looking into what's happened with the Foundation as well and as I mentioned the fact that the Foundation are on the move and we see them actively recruiting throughout the Outer Rim, it's only a matter of time before the clones realise what's going on and see them as a threat. I did mention in my last video if the clones had done anything to sort of negate or counterbalance the changes to their DNA over the last hundred years and we sort of see in this episode that they've taken steps to do that. There's a woman who's sort of like a coordinator to make sure they've all got the same mannerisms and move the same way and say things at the same time. I can't tell if she was advising off of one of them or she's just watched a lot of maybe old videos of old clones and based it on that. But it's not really important, I suppose. Because this is all sort of been set up for the dinner between the in-laws and the outlaws kind of thing. And Queen Seraph, Day's future wife, doesn't pull any punches. She's very direct and also a little bit sneaky. She says that she doesn't really see them as people, more copies of something that can be replaced. Referring to the clone backups that they have and we do see it in this episode as well. She points out that the idea of the marriage between her and Day goes against the very idea of the dynasty. And she also mentions that she only ended up being in her position of power after an accident. So I do wonder if Day set that up because that's the person that he'd be most, you know, compatible with. I want to hear what you guys think about that. Was he behind that? Because I can easily see Brother Day doing something like that. Let me know in the comments below. She also mentions what would happen if she had a child with Day and how this would end the dynasty, as the next one in line, Brother Dawn, would never ascend to the throne. Now it looks as if she's been doing her homework on the Empire, because when Day takes her to see the original Cleon clone in the backups, she assumes that Demerzel is exactly the same and in the same boat because she never ages. And they've not really looked in or mentioned the robot thing too much. I know there's a rights issue with the Asimov estate in the show, so they can't go into it, but I wonder how they're going to adapt this, because they haven't focused on Demerzel much this episode. But yeah, she's definitely sussed out at least what Brother Day's about, I don't know about the other two. 
and it seems that he's given up a lot more than she is for this to happen. Now I said she's been looking into the clones and in the last hundred years apparently the fact that their DNA has been corrupted is at the very least a rumour. So someone is talking or plotting because we know that plots have gone on against them for decades so why not a century? And I think it's only a matter of time before the brothers Cleon turn on each other because if it crosses one of their minds it at least should occur to the others because I know they're different but they're still kind of the same person. It could also be that once they see the Foundation as a threat, it unites them as well, but I think Seraph and Day are kind of going to try and do their own thing and wipe the other two out. But I want to hear what you guys think about that as well, so let me know. Now the episode ends with Gal revealing more of her vision because they've worked out where they need to go next, and she tells her that she's seen Salvor in the future die with her. Now we know that Gal can predict the future, we just don't really know how far she can change events. I think that's obviously going to be a big plot point moving forward. Can they change things using these abilities and what can they change and what can't they? I hope they don't set the rules in stone too much because they're kind of going to have to stick with it. But yeah, we got a lot in this episode. Hobor, Mallow, the mule, the whole Polly thing coming back I really liked. Again, I didn't expect that. And we got a lot more Harry with Gail and Salvor, which I always think is fantastic because Jared Harris is just such a magnetic actor. As always, these are just my thoughts. I want to hear what you think, so let me know in the comments below. If you've made it this far, as always, leave a like on the video, and if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting more Foundation videos, more Silo videos, more Star Trek stuff, you know the drill. So make sure you've got the notifications turned on so you don't miss it. And as always, my name's Al. Thanks for watching.